Happy Wealth Wednesday, Tara. So glad to have you here. I know the whole world of IRAs can seem confusing and Alto is doing a lot to demystify that and also expand what's possible. So really excited to have you here and to chat more. Would love if you would kick us off just with a bit of your background. Tell us about who you are and how you got to this place. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. So Tara Fung, I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Alto IRA, and we enable folks to use retirement accounts to invest into private markets and alternative assets. My journey is pretty atypical. I come from a small town in rural North Carolina, um, was raised by a single mom. And so I'm really excited for this conversation because I think um, what I've been able to learn along the way might be helpful for other people who are thinking about getting started in investing and how to how to approach that. Um, but from an education standpoint, studied economics because I wanted to figure out how the world works and the rest of my life's journey has been part of that. I decided to get into financial technology or fintech because I think money touches everyone. Um, and it felt like something that I could potentially make a difference in other people's lives by doing. I love that. Just kind of touching on your background, what was the first investment you ever made? Do you remember what got you started? I was thinking about this because um, so my mom was so good at stretching every dollar. It was me, my mom and my sister, and um, she worked in nonprofits. So there was never a lot of money to go around. So saving and budgeting was so core to how she raised me and my sister. Like we knew those things, we talked about those things. We never talked about investing though. And so when I was reflecting back to think when, what was my first investment? It was actually when I started working and I got a 401k plan. And I probably invested in some target date fund that I was auto enrolled in without really thinking about it. Um, and since then a lot has changed, but that's, that was my starting point. So then what got you started in this space? I, um, I'm working in a very, uh, I would say, avant-garde space at this point. So helping folks invest not only in alternative investments and private markets, but doing so with retirement funds. And the way that I got here is actually I became a customer of Alto before I became an employee. Um, after business school, I joined a fintech firm out of New York. And as I started to go on my own wealth and investing journey, I became really excited about alternative assets. I realized there was this whole world of interesting things that you could put your money into that from a portfolio standpoint made a lot of sense coming together. And um, I actually got started by investing into um, some securitized high in art uh, through a platform called Masterworks. Art as an asset class was something that made a lot of sense to me. I did my research, I chose my painting, and I went to go make an investment and I got prompted to either invest and pay with my bank account, or I could invest out of my retirement account. And that blew my mind because I was like, wait, I could use my retirement account to invest into things like this. Like, this is exciting. This actually is more than just an investment. It means something to me. Um, and so that's how I got started. And once you go down the world of private markets, like it is a deep well, and there's a lot to learn. I'm still learning. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I love that. We hear that from time to time, just like the second you connect to an investment, not just as a monetary thing, but because you care about it or you're excited about it, or you feel like you have ownership in something that you want to belong to or feel associated with, that's kind of where the power comes from. So, and I mean, what role do you feel like you play in the wealth space now and why is that important? So what the role that we play at Alto is we um, unlock basically the largest investing account for an individual to be able to use those funds to invest into anything they want. Um, so if you look at households here in the U.S., about 70 percent of the dollars they have available to invest are in their retirement accounts. But almost everyone who has a retirement account, if you go to Fidelity or Vanguard or Schwab and you say, hey, I want to invest into a Basquiat painting, or I want to invest into a private company or private real estate. 
they will say no, assuming you can even get in touch with someone. Um, they just don't support, they have a menu of options and they don't support private markets and alternative investments. And so the role that we play is we unlock someone's largest wallet such that they can invest into private markets. And the reason we think this is so important is when you look at the professional investor, the institutional investor, um, somewhere between 20 to 50% of their portfolio is invested in alternative assets. And when you look at the individual investor, it's about one to 5%. And probably 1% might even be overstating it. This data is really hard to come by. And so as public markets become less diverse, as companies wait longer to go public, as there's this burgeoning private market landscape that's growing, if people aren't able to participate, they are gonna be at a disadvantage later on down the road. They're not gonna be able to have the financial futures that they hope for themselves. And if people are going to participate, they need to be able to access their largest source of funds, which is the, their retirement accounts. So, so that's the role that we play. Super helpful. And would you just kind of let us know, what do you think is the most exciting thing that you've learned about this space since moving from customer to actually builder? Yeah. And what do you want others to know? I think um, alternative investments, that's a term that is really intimidating. It's like, what does that even mean? It's like this umbrella term that can mean everything from investing into a startup to crypto, to private real estate, to private credit, private equity. Like there's so many things that this entails. And once you start saying a lot of those things, people automatically assume, oh, well, I need to be really rich to be able to, to even play that game, right? Like. I need to be investing 100K, 250K into any given deal to even be able to participate. And in the last really six years, the landscape has changed drastically. You can invest in private companies for as little as $10 um, on, in certain places. And you don't even have to be an accredited investor to do it. Um, and so it's really what, what I like to impart to people is it's never um, too early to get started. And there is an option open to, to everyone to be able to dip their toes in the water, become more comfortable, become more educated. Um, and you don't, have to, you don't have to start once you've already got millions in the bank that you're looking to deploy. I love this. And is there a person or a company who's really inspiring you in the space right now that, you know, we should look up or resources or anything that you think is worth, you know, pointing us in the direction to? So one person, and it's literally my, I basically don't do Twitter, but the one person that I actively follow on Twitter is a woman by the name of Maya Bittner. She's currently at Chime. She's a prior founder. Companies were acquired. And what I just love about Maya is one, she's a total feminist. Um, two, she is such a truth teller. She calls it like she sees it and she's not afraid to use whatever expletive is needed to, to describe what she's seeing. And she's such a consumer focused um, product visionary. So I just really appreciate her take on things. Um, in addition to, she's an active angel investor. So I just really appreciate her take on things and I'm a total fan girl and I find it highly entertaining to, to follow her tweets. I will be following her right now <laughs> after this. Thank you. And so what advice would you give to somebody getting started? Yeah, I think um, it's really important to not just get into the hype of something, but actually if you're going to make an investment, you, you need to educate yourself, right? Um, whether that's crypto, whether that's startups, whether that's private credit, it's really important to, to understand what you're investing into. And that also lends itself to starting small, right? Like you don't have to do everything at once. Um, when I started on my private market investing journey, I started with high-end art. And I took like a month to just read about it, understand it, understand why a one to 2% portfolio allocation to high-end art made sense as a part of a diversified portfolio because art, it, it reacts very differently to market swings than other asset classes. So it's a meaningful diversifier. So I would say, you know, don't be afraid to start small and definitely take the time to educate yourself along the way so that you feel confident um, in your investment decisions versus just saying, well, I hear everyone's doing this, so I'm going to do it too. I love that. It's so, it's so true to just focus on one thing at a time, because the idea of like educating yourself on every topic and every alternative investment, that's so overwhelming. So if you could just kind of pick a lane, um, are there any resources that you would recommend of like how to decide which alternatives to start with? Like, how did you decide on 
high-end art and then educate yourself on that or, you know, of, of the menu, how to, how to figure out where to start? Yeah. So for me, it was honestly based on um, curiosity and interest. I was just really fascinated by it as a topic. And so it didn't feel like work when I started um, doing my research. Um, Another great place you can go to find more information is on our website, we list out all of the places that accept Alto as a funding source, right? Like all of these alternative investment providers and platforms. Um, And so that's a great list to say, okay, what does the landscape look like? And which of these are interesting to me? And then on those provider sites, there's a lot more detail. Um, I think uh, depending on what people are interested in, you know, Masterworks is that platform where I made the investment into art. Um, My Percent is a private credit platform that I think has some really good opportunities. AngelList is great for investing into startups. Um, But yeah, I'd encourage folks to check out altoira.com and you can see the list of providers and maybe use that as a starting point to do your own diligence. Fantastic. And anything else we should know? How can we follow you and keep track of what you're up to? Yeah, well, I am on Twitter. I've already said that, but I don't do much there. Um, but Tara Fung, I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. You can reach out to me at Tara at altoire.com. Um, I think what, what I'm hoping people come away um, from this little session is knowing that they anyone can get started um, and that what we're doing at Alto, we're very much, even though it sounds cliche, a mission-driven organization, we think more people should be accessing alternatives and be able to participate in private markets. And so we're trying to help by unlocking their largest wallet. Um, And so if we can be helpful to you, please reach out to us and we hope to hear from you. Brilliant. Thank you, Tara, for everything that you shared. I hope that this inspires people to start looking into the world of alternatives and just looking forward to keeping in touch and tracking what you're up to. Thanks so much for having me.